Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to see about supplemental space infection. I have given the gist of the supplemental space infection. Let's move on to the topic. First, you have to describe the boundaries of supplemental space infection. The boundaries of supplemental space and then the contents of supplemental space. Then teeth involved in the supplemental space infection. The next is what are the muscles related to the supplemental space. And then the neighboring spaces of the supplemental space. Next comes the source of infection of this supplemental space infection. And then the clinical features of supplemental space infection. Finally, the treatment of the supplemental space infection. Have a look at this diagram. The supplemental space is here. And this will be your anterior belly of digastric muscle. And this will be your mandible. This is the hyoid bone. I have given the gist of the things. You have to explain these headings in detail. Let's discuss about boundaries of the supplemental space. This will be your mandible. And this will be your hyoid bone. Now moving on to the boundaries. Anteriorly you have anteriorly what you have? Anteriorly you have mandible. And posteriorly what you have? Posteriorly you have hyoid bone. Medially. Medially what you have? This is the submental space. Isn't it? This is the submental space. Then here it will be the single midline space and there will be no medial wall. You have to mention that medially you have single midline space. With no medial wall. And what do you have laterally? Laterally you have the anterior belly of digastric muscle bilaterally. This is the anterior belly of digastric muscle. Anterior belly of digastric muscle. You have to write laterally as anterior belly of digastric muscle bilaterally. Medially you will be having the single midline space with no medial wall and laterally you have the anterior belly of digastric muscle bilaterally. Now what do you have superiorly? Superiorly you have the mylohyoid muscle. This will be your mylohyoid muscle. You have to write superiorly mylohyoid. And inferiorly you will be having skin and subcutaneous tissue. As well as your platysma and deep cervical fascia. What are the boundaries present? Anteriorly you have mandible that is this one. Posteriorly you have the hyoid bone. 
medially you have the single midline space with no medial wall that is this one laterally you have the anterior belly of digastric which is present bilaterally and superiorly you have the mylohyoid muscle and inferiorly you have skin and subcutaneous tissue platysma and deep cervical fascia that's it about boundaries if you remember this diagram you can write the boundaries easily it is simple now boundaries is done the next what we have to discuss is the contents of the submental space infection what are the contents present in the submental space it includes the anterior jugular veins and lymph nodes these two are the important contents that is present in the submental space the next heading is the teeth involved teeth involved is the lower incisors obviously you know the submental space infection it affects the mandibular incisors that is the mandibular anteriors then what is the muscle related the muscle related to this space is the mentalis muscle you can remember easily that is the submental space so there will be the mentalis muscle what are the contents the anterior jugular vein lymph nodes and the teeth involved are the lower incisors now what are the muscle related is the mentalis muscle what is the neighboring space near to this the submandibular space the neighboring space will be your submandibular space here will be your submandibular space here will be your submandibular space this is the submental space and here will be your submandibular space the neighboring space you can write it as submandibular submandibular space now what are the source of infection it may be due to the infection from lower incisors lower lip chin the tip of the tongue and anterior part of float of the mouth i'll repeat first is the lower incisor and then will be your lower lip tip of the tongue and anterior part of floor of the mouth what are the source of the infection it includes the lower incisor lower lip tip of the tongue anterior part of the floor of the mouth infection that is the infection from these areas will spread to the submental lymph nodes and it might cause infection of the submental space that's why it's the submental space infection this is the source of infection of the submental space infection now let's move on to the clinical features of submental space infection clinical features extra orally and intra orally first we'll see extra oral features it includes the swelling in the midline there will be swelling in the midline and there will be swelling in the region of chin and the region behind it so these are the in extra oral clinical features that is there will be swelling in the midline and the region of the chin and the region just beneath it what are the intraoral clinical features there will be non vital
non vital or fractured tooth there will be mobility of the tooth and discomfort on swallowing these are the intraoral features there will be non vital or fractured tooth and there may be the mobility of the tooth the tooth may be mobile and there will be discomfort on swallowing these are the clinical features you have to write it extra orally as well as intra orally extra orally there will be the swelling in the midline and this is the submental space infection so you have to mention it will be obviously it is in the chin the swelling will be in the chin and in the midline intra orally you will be having mobility of the tooth non vital or fractured tooth discomfort on swallowing discomfort on speech you can write that also these are the some of the clinical features important clinical features of submental space infection moving on to the treatment of the submental space infection here you will be doing the transverse incision that is transverse incision is done it will be done on the symphysis of mandible by using which you use the kelly's forcep or sinus forcep kelly's forceps or sinus forceps the incision is done and then you're moving it upward and backward direction and then it is drained and sutured this is the surgical treatment first you will be doing the transverse incision where you will be doing you will be doing on the symphysis of mandible by using the kelly's forceps or sinus forceps upward and backward direction it is done and it is drained and then it is secured with suture this is the surgical treatment of the submental space infection let's recall what we have covered in this video we have discussed about the boundaries the content the teeth involved the muscle related the neighboring space source of infection the clinical features of submental space infection and the treatment of submental space infection that's it about submental space infection it is very simple and easy topic just you have to know the diagram properly as i always say that's it for today's video thank you for watching my video if you like the video hit the like button share this video and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching thank you